Hi, everyone. So it is 3.30 p.m. I am at Compass Outreach and Education Center in Fort Lauderdale right now. And as you can see from our background, we believe in creativity being uh, intelligence, having fun. So basically, today I wanted to talk about how to homeschool in the state of Florida. It's really pretty much going to be Broward specific, but I wanted to give you guys an idea. Uh, Florida and Broward is basically the same all over Florida. The only difference is that if you are in Broward, then you'll be sending your documents to the city, I mean, to the county of Broward. Um, so most of the information I give will talk about Broward's paperwork, but generally speaking, you can use uh, similar paperwork throughout all the counties in Florida. Um, the state law is state law, and that's what we follow. So, but let me just let you guys know a little bit about myself. So my name is uh, Iman Aline. Most of my kids or most of my parents call me Miss Iman. I run a program called Kind Academy. Uh, we currently post, uh, we currently partnered with another program, actually a private school called uh, Compass Outreach. And uh, we just really like to give the community a lot of different options. And homeschooling is one of my favorite options because it really gives you a chance to connect with your child. It also gives a lot of flexibility. It also gives a lot of chances for you to see the world. So uh, a few years ago, I decided to start homeschooling my own children. I was a former public school teacher. Uh, I have a master's in school counseling and I was also uh, certified in special education. When I was in the school system, I realized that in special education, a lot of these students have things called individual education plans. And I thought that it was such an amazing way for us to determine what a student needed and then go off of that and um, basically create plans that really work for the student. It was completely individualized and very personalized to meet that student where they were and to make it so that these students were able and, and we were able to make sure that we were actually uh, working with the students and make sure that they had specific goals for them. So uh, we really wanted to create a program like this for students who didn't ha necessarily have an IEP. So that's kind of why we started. Hi, Arlene, thank you for joining. Um, so I'm gonna see a few of my parents when I see them pop on, I'm gonna try to say hi. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask questions. Like that's what I'm here for. Um, so basically I was just talking about who I am. So basically, like I said, my name is Iman Aline. I run a program called Kind Academy and I just recently partnered with another private school to offer a hybrid school program. Um, but I have a background in education. I was in the public schools for a while and just realized that it wasn't going to be for my own three kids. I have three boys and I was like, there's no way that um, that being in the regular school environment was going to work for us. So um, I basically pulled them out. I started homeschooling them about three years ago. My oldest son is now currently eight. My middle child is now going on six and my youngest is three. So we've been homeschooling off and on pretty much for the past three years. So I know a good amount about it now and I feel like I'm a little bit more seasoned. Uh, last year I did a series just like this and it was very, very popular. And I, I said, once I was done teaching for the year, I, was, I wanted to do another one because it was really one of those things. I didn't know anything coming in um, and I really wish I had something like this when I came in. Hi, Paige, thanks for joining. So we decided to do this series. So basically over the next couple of, probably over the next month, month and a half, um, when I can pop on, uh, you'll get a notification if you're signed up for our page saying what our next topic is gonna be. So today's topic, we're basically gonna be going over what, uh, what homeschooling is and basically how to do it in South Florida or how to do it in Florida because the state, the law is the same across the state of Florida. Um, so that's going to be today, but over the next couple of weeks, we're going to go over choosing a curriculum. We're going to go over how to maintain a portfolio, which is usually like one of the bigger questions too. Um, how to do that evaluation. And if you decide to not homeschool or if you move, how to terminate homeschooling. Um, so that will all happen. And there's, if you have topics that you want to see, please ask. And everyone that's joining right now, please feel free to ask questions. Uh, I, I'm, um, that's what I'm here for. Like I love answering questions and helping out in that way, especially with something that, like I said, we really, really wish that, I really wish that I had something like this. Um, but I will tell you how I got a lot of the knowledge and how I got a lot of the information that I got too. So I'm gonna get started. Basically, um, it's gonna be just like a regular online class if you've ever taken one. Uh, basically, we're gonna, our objectives for today is basically finding your why. Uh, why do you wanna homeschool? Um, that's usually what's gonna keep you going when you're going crazy because homeschooling is not <laughs> like the easiest thing in the world. It's not impossible, but it's it's it can definitely be a bit of a challenge. So finding your why is an important step. Uh, the legalities, I think that a lot of people are a little bit worried about 
what's the law? Am I going to get in trouble? Because there is definitely some law that's involved in it. Uh, finding your tribe, um, finding your support group is really, really important because like I said, it, it can get a little bit challenging to homeschool. So having people around you that are supportive is, is a very important thing. So we're going to talk about how to find your tribe. And um, we're also going to talk about getting social um, and academic support because those things are um, becoming more accessible, but they are still things that can be a little bit of a challenge to find too. So we're going to talk about all those things today. So again, if you pop on and you have any questions, please feel free to just uh, write in the comments. I think I can see everything. I see Dana, who like, hi Dana, how are you? I, for some reason, I can never see comments anymore. So I'm so sorry. Um, I'll pop on a little bit afterwards and um, try to answer any questions that you have. Um, but let me get started. So basically, finding your why. So um, finding your why in anything is always an important aspect of anything that you do. When it comes to something like homeschooling, it really makes it a little bit smoother to always go back to why do I want to do this? Why is this important to me? So if you just take a second and really focus on what is so important. Why is it important for you to homeschool your children? Why is it something that you're attracted to? If you take a second and you write down three reasons, those are the things that are always gonna guide you in this homeschooling journey. So my reasons for deciding to homeschool was, I think I had maybe two or three really, really strong ones. And I think flexibility was really the biggest thing for us, being able to go whenever we wanted, not, in ha not having to worry too much about attendance or not having to worry too much about um, the missing you know, things. That was a big part of it for me. Uh, the other part was really being able to individualize my children, individualize their education, like being able to individualize my um, focus on what they are interested in was really a huge thing for us. Uh, for example, last year, we were able to go through chemistry. My son was in second grade. We went through, we learned a lot of chemistry. He really wanted to blow stuff up. I don't know if you've seen me last year. He jumped on screen when I didn't expect him to. And um, he, you know, wanted to learn chemistry. He wanted to learn, you know, what makes things go boom. So we did that in second grade. And I know some schools will do that. Um, but it was really cool to be able to give that to him when he was really interested in it. For another thing that he's really interested in right now is fishing. So we're working on, uh, we were actually joining in a class uh, with the Youth Environmental Alliance that's gonna allow us to go fishing. Um, so finding your why, my, my biggest why was uh, flexibility and being able to individualize education. Another thing that we're really working on with him, uh, my oldest, my eight-year-old is character development. I was able to really create a character development and a personal development. So we talk about things like empathy and compassion and of course kindness, which is our major like thing. Um, but another thing we're really focused on is personal development. Um, finding out how, how do we reach our goals? How, how do we um, get to the point in our lives where we're not focused on anything negative that's going, how do we remain positive even when things aren't going our way? So we're right now, we're doing things like Caleb Maddox. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he's this amazing um, motivational speaker who's a child, who's a kid, and he's been doing it for years. He's written like seven books. So right now we're working on that. So just having the time to do all those things, those were my whys. Your why may be totally different, but Remembering those whys is really important. Um, my final why is probably I don't ever want to bash the public school system. I think that for families who really don't have any other op options or are okay with uh, the traditional method of schooling where, you know, children aren't really getting, for example, my biggest concern is, is one of my biggest concerns are recess. Um, kindergarten, they have 15 minutes of recess in our, in our local school. And that just to me is is mind blowing. And, and because nature and being outside and being able to kind of move their bodies, especially at that age between kindergarten through fifth grade is so important. Being outside for anyone um, out of a seven hour day, you're talking about 15 minutes, possibly being outside. It was very, very mind blowing to me and mind boggling as to why we did this to our, why we were doing this to our children. Um, so that was another big why of mine. I probably have a whole lot of whys, but those are probably my three top whys. So if you take a time, take your time and determine why am I doing this, that will always bring you back to, um, to being focused on making this work because homeschooling is one of those things that it is, a, it can be time consuming and it, and it does take, it does take motivation. So that why that you get is gonna get you that motivation. 
So that's number one, um, finding your why. So I hope that answered your questions about why are we finding our why. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the law. A lot of people have questions about, okay, what do I need to do? I, I, this is just so overwhelming. This is so mind boggling. If you just look up HSLDA, basically that has all the laws that you need to think about, but I'll break them down for you as much as I possibly can. Uh, basically as homeschoolers, uh, anyone else that joined, I don't see you popping up, but hello. Thank you so much. So I have Arlene. Hi, Dana. Oh, I'm seeing, I'm seeing comments. Comments are a little delayed. I see you, Arlene. Thank you so much. Okay. And I see Dana. Hi, Dana. Okay, so um, the law. So this is where a lot of people are like confused, okay, and they're, and they're a little bit worried about it because they don't want to get arrested or they don't want anything to go crazy with their kids being taken away, and I understand that. So um, the law. Basically, by the time that children are six in the state of Florida, that's compulsory school attendance time. Um, by law, you have to be doing something with your child by that age, uh, whether it's in public, private, or homeschool. To homeschool, by the year that they're about to turn six, that September, you need to file something called a notice of intent. If you Google the words Broward County notice of intent, the PDF form that they offer is going to pop up. It's basically, uh, it, it's basically just a form that says the child's name, their date of birth, their age, their, it just, your address, things like that. You're basically registering your student as a homeschooler. If you've never ever been to school, which is some families, if you've never gone to school, they're gonna also ask you to basically register the child as a student. So they're usually gonna ask for like your birth certificate and a proof of residency as well. Um, so the law is basically you have to have your child in some sort of a program by the age of six. If they're turning six by the February 1st of that school year. So that's September, if they turn six in February of that September, then your job is to register them as a homeschooler if that's what your goal is or, as, or in school. Um, so that's the first thing is the notice of intent. So um, make sure that you do a notice of intent. Like I said, it's basically just you registering your student and saying, okay, I have to sign my child up for school, even though it's homeschool. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it when it comes to notice of intent. I don't know if there's if you have specific questions about it. I'm gonna keep looking at. I said H L A B A. Hi, Sig Sigrid. So H. <laughs> hold on one second. H L S D A is H S L D A. I'm sorry, and I'll actually link it in the comments for everyone, so that way. If it sounded like a B, I meant to say a C. I mean, I went. I meant to say a uh, a D. If it sounded like a B, I meant to say a D. And like I said, I'm gonna comment here. And I'm hearing that comments are a little delayed, so if you don't see it pop up right away, um, but that's basically where most homeschoolers go for a lot of their knowledge. Um, sorry about that. Oh, thank you, thank you, Arlene. You had already put it up, and I'm just seeing it. All righty. So that pretty much will answer your questions about the notice of intent. Um, in addition to a notice of intent, when you start homeschooling your child, you need to make something called a portfolio. I'm not gonna go too much into portfolio during now, but that's basically you keeping records showing that you're doing things with your, with your child. Uh, generally, that is, encompasses an educational log. It's like an activity log of what you're doing with your child throughout the weeks and the days that you're doing work with them. Most families use a lesson planner just to show what they've done or a calendar. They just write little notes on their calendar. Some use an online program and they, and they go by that. Um, that's your activity log or educational log. Reading log, your reading log is basically the books that you're reading with your child. Uh, sometimes that's um, reading comprehension workbooks. What are they reading in there? You're checking that off as you go along. Uh, a lot of families use like a list from the public schools that you can find a reading log printout on online you can print that out and you could just write in there the books that you're reading a lot of families do for the older kids they usually do like at least one chapter book per month um it could also be what you're reading to your child throughout the reading log um some students use i just did an evaluation today and she uses something i can't remember what it is but for example we used uh, reading eggs as our curriculum last year and they have a library there so basically they had a list of all the books that my son was reading so that's what i used for my reading log um so that's basically it when it comes to and then a portfolio which is all the work that your child is doing throughout the school year that's samples of your students work generally um math reading very very important for you to do everything else usually is um, a lot of the families that i know usually do science and social studies kind of intertwine those things together and they do a lot of field trips and project-based activities they take pictures of that and they put it online and basically that becomes kind of like the portfolio but 
like I said, I'll talk more about that um, for one of our next episodes so we don't go too long on each of these because I know everyone's pressed for time. Um, that's pretty much it when it comes to the law. You also need to make sure that you keep those records for two years um, and you also want to make sure that you, when you're done homeschooling or if you decide to move to a different county, you do something, you file a notice of termination, which is basically counseling or, or saying I'm no longer going to homeschool. So that's pretty much encompasses the whole law of it. Let me just make sure that I went over everything because um, there's really not much to it. Some states are much more challenging. Um, they don't tell you, a lot of people are like, oh, well, what curriculum do I have to use? You are not required to use any specific curriculum. There's even students who, and families who decide to use an umbrella school where they unschool, which is a type of homeschooling or a type of schooling where a lot of families that I know do it, um, they use an umbrella school and they don't, uh, and in that way, they don't have to keep that portfolio at all. So there are ways for you to not do it that way if you don't want to. But according to law, you do have to have them in something by the time that they're six. So I think that that covers everything when it comes to the law. Um, if I missed anything, please feel free to point it out. Hi, Mori, how are you? Um, I think that that's it when it comes to the law. Finding your tribe. So I talk about this often, and when you, or especially when you're first starting out, the hugest thing that I always tell parents is to find your tribe. Finding your tribe really means just finding your people. Uh, homeschooling is a very, it's almost like when you're a new parent and you're in that area where you don't know where the where people are and you really miss socializing, but you know, you don't really know how to find play dates and things like that. So, right, the best thing to do when you start homeschooling is find a group of other of people who are homeschooling if you don't know anyone yet. The way that I generally suggest to do that is by looking on Facebook. Facebook, if you type in the words homeschooling and then whatever city or whatever even county that you may be in. Um, so for us, it would be for, um, it would be homeschooling groups, South Florida. And there's actually a South Florida homeschooling group. And that's one of the homeschool groups that was one of the first groups that I joined three years ago, four years ago, when I decided that I wanted to homeschool. And they kind of were like, oh yeah, homeschool is the best thing ever. And um, they were really supportive and kind of kind of talked me into it. And I'm, I'm grateful that they did, but I didn't have anyone else around me who had ever done it. So just being able to go there and go to the meetups and pick their brains was like the most, was, was a very, um, and they're so open about the knowledge that just being able to go there and see it in action and see, okay, this is what they do and this is how it's done was really, really helpful for me. Um, in addition to that, there's also a school, which is a great community. You just need to make sure when you request to join any of these groups, you make sure you answer whatever questions they ask because they do want to make sure that you are who you say you are and there is security that comes along with that. Uh, we also have a community called Kind Academy Community. So if you have questions about homeschooling, you can always ask there as well. Um, and then there's another one that popped up throughout the year that I didn't, I wasn't really, uh, I didn't really know much about. There's Eclectic Homeschoolers of Broward, I think is the name. Um, but like I said, if you look up, Miami has different groups. West Palm Beach has different groups. Uh, the whole South Florida area really has groups that are specific for you. And they do meetups, they do events, they do classes, they do a whole lot of different things. So you can totally join those groups and you'll be able to get a lot of knowledge from going to them too. And support and socializing, which is my last topic of the day. Um, getting social and academic support. So um, I think the biggest myth or the biggest question about homeschooling is how do they get socialized? Like, how is it that they, how do we have friends? Like that's gonna be, we're gonna be bored. What are we, how are we gonna do things, how? So first let's take a step back and think about um, socializing. So socializing really, the goal of socializing is that we develop basically kind, happy people. Um, in school, uh, socializing is usually, they, you have a chance to talk, you have a, chance to problem solve, you have a chance to really learn. And I, I will tell you just from a background of a teacher and being in the school system. And again, like I, I never, ever, ever want to take anything away from the from what it is, because there are some amazing teachers and amazing administration that I worked with when I was in schools. But just from the way that it's set up, it's very difficult for children to really have a chance to socialize. It is a lot, a lot, a lot of work, a lot of transitions, a lot of time and very, very, very little time for unstructured time for children to basically develop conflict resolution skills and problem solving skills and be able to talk with each other. Like I said, that was another reason that I was, I, I couldn't, um, I couldn't see my children being in, in, in school. 
Um, so when it comes to socializing, uh, there's a lot of huge benefits to being in homeschool. A lot of times they homeschoolers are known to be very social kids and socializing usually is based off of the parents. If the parents are super extroverted, which is really what a lot of people determine to be social, then a lot of times your student will be extroverted as well. Maybe not. And if they're not, that's okay as well. Um, but we really just want to grow happy, kind people is really the goal. And our schools are kind of failing at that, unfortunately. Homeschooling gives you the freedom to really make sure that you're having your children socialized in a way that you want them socialized in, mostly. So the way that you get social or the way that we made sure that we got social was we joined those groups that I was speaking about earlier, um, a school, South Florida uh, homeschool group, eclectic homeschoolers of Broward County, Kind Academy community, some big ones. We joined those and it became to the point where we ran out of, like we ran out of days in the week like there were so many activities and so many field trips and so many opportunities to learn and so many opportunities to just hang out and 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 i mean homeschoolers have really been able to create such a beautiful environment for kids to strive in like uh, we still had holiday events we still have spring events we still have field day we still have access to a lot of these different uh graduation <laughs> like we did that at, at our school um, or, or just ceremonies, things like that. Like we, we didn't miss out on any of that stuff by becoming homeschoolers, just by joining the communities that are available to us. Um, and then when it comes to academics, there's a lot of different academic programs and, and, and even more so popping up now that offer different academic support. Um, when I say academic support, what I mean is sometimes it's, it's not impossible for you to only be the person that's teaching math or reading or whatever it is, but a lot of times having a support or especially in the beginning, how do I do this? I don't understand, like what curriculum should I choose? Having that support, having your um, a chance to kind of have a school or have somebody else to help you with those things is, is beneficial, especially in the beginning. So um, our program, we actually do offer um, basically regular academic support for the core subjects as well as nature education at Compass Out Outreach and Education Center right now. Um, there's a lot of other programs too. If you just basically Google homeschool classes in the area, a lot of times you'll get, uh, you'll, you'll get a hit back with different programs that are out there that really do help you. Sometimes um, I think the big thing and I, what I see the future of education being right now is hybrid school and being uh, the way that families that homeschool and that basically allows your child to go to school a certain amount of days of go to school a certain amount of days a week like you get to choose your school you put them in a program for two days a week or so or three days a week and then the other two or three days they're with you and you're taking them to field trips or you are doing their learning at home and basically continuing it's basically like blending their learning for them and it's still a way to individualize but still get the benefits of being able to have your child be socially active being able to have your child be in a social environment at the same time. So um, I think hybrid schooling is really the future of education. Um, it, it's really, that's really the focus that I want for my children as well. Uh, I love them, of course, but being able to have one or two days where they're kind of going somewhere else or two or three days a week where they're going somewhere else has been the um, an amazing, amazing opportunity for us. Um, they get a break from me which I, like I know that they need that and I get a break from them. And I think that um, it creates a, a, a really, and they get a break from each other. Uh, I have three siblings, if I haven't said that already. So they have their moments where it's, you know, they're kind of picking at each other. If you have siblings, then you know what I mean. If you don't, then you will, if you ever do, if not, then I understand. But either way, kids can kind of uh, get on each other's nerves when they're in the house and if they're not out doing something, uh, being in an environment where they can be social as well as have a chance to be learning as well is is really beneficial. So I think hybrid schooling is really the way that school's going to go. And like I said, we offer that program here. Uh, if you Google hybrid homeschooling, you'll see a lot of the feedback uh, coming back for that. But if you can't do that or if it's not in your budget or if it's not something that you really are too interested in, there's always opportunity to just join the groups and um, and and really do like a lot of the play dates and meetups. I really suggest those things. Um, like I said, the, the top three groups are, uh, a few of the groups are Us School, Eclectic Homeschool, Eclectic Homeschool is a Broward, uh, Kind Academy Community is another one, and um, I forgot the last one, South Florida Homeschool Group, which is the first one that I found when I looked it up. 
Um, but basically, like I said, I'm I'm at 25 minutes. I usually don't go this long at all. I really try to keep these to be about 15 to 20 minutes max because I know how it is for everyone. Like I said, over the next few sessions, you're going to see these popped up if you if you liked our page uh, and join our community because that way you'll get to see everything that's going on in all of our events as well. Um, basically over the next few sessions i'm going to go over different things and as people ask me different topics that they want to learn more about i'll i'll create different videos about those things and i think that's pretty much it i'm trying to see if there's any more comments um i see rachel i see becky thank you guys so much for joining and like i said i i think that that's it i i hope i answered everyone's questions about how to homeschool i hope i didn't miss anything that happens sometimes but i'll just make up for it by adding it to the next video the next time you see me, I'm probably going to be talking about um, portfolios because that's usually the biggest question that people have. How do I keep a portfolio? So stay tuned for that and um, hope I see you guys next time. Bye.